In the last video, we have covered the concepts and architecture of convolutional neural network. And in these videos, let's move ahead, put this in practice, and build a convolutional neural network. Let's get started. Just like what we've done in previous course, we're going to continue to use the TensorFlow 2 carrots to build a convolutional neural network. And again, in this example, sequential model is used to demonstrate the trainings, a simple convolutional neural network to classify image. Let's dive in into the example. Uh, first thing first, we would like to import the sequential model. And then there's four types of layers that we would like to import that includes the convolutional layers and maximum pooling layers. Because this is an image, we need to use a convolutional 2Ds and also maximum, uh, maximum pooling 2D. And then at the end, we would like to do the classification. So we would like to flatten the convoluted features. And then we have some dense layers for, to help us to perform the classifications. And we need to import the data set. And the data set contains 60 thousands colors image in 10 classes that is the data sets that we would like to play around and of course we would like to import the tensorflow um, just in case if there are some functions that we would like to use uh, later and we import the numpy and also import the matplotlibs for some plotting as well and we run this cells and let's take a look on the image from these data sets. The data sets contains the 60,000 image in 10 classes with 6,000 image per class. And it is separated as the training image and also testing image. Uh, uh, 50,000 uh, will be used for training and 10,000 image will be used for the uh, testing. And the class are completely mutually exclusive. Um, Hence, um, they, there's no, uh, on, uh, for every single image, they only have one class. And here are the class in the data set that includes the airplane, the automobile, bird, cats, and so and so. Each example is a 32 by 32 color image, uh, just like what I mentioned before, because this is a color image or this is a 32 by 32 image, we need to use a convolutional 2D and also maximum pooling 2D in order for us to capture the features for this colored image. And here is an example of how the data looks like. For example, the airplane is like this, the automobiles is like this, and something like that. And we just need to load this cell and it will automatically help us to divided into four sets of the data that includes the training image um, with their up, uh, corresponding labels. And also we have the testing image with their uh, associated label. Now let's perform a normalization. The image are stored in 20x by 20x numpy arrays with the pixel value ranging from 0 to 255. Therefore, uh, value 255 are used to normalize the pixel value in order for us to make it between 0 and 1. Now let's normalize the image. The labels are an arrays of the integer ranging from 0 to lines, and so we also build a list to uh, their corresponding classes and make it stored in these uh, class names. Now let's run the cell again. Now let's explore a little bit of the data. Um, let's take a look on the shapes of the training image and also their labels. Just like what I mentioned before, we have 50,000 image as the training image. And then each of the image is 32 by 32 and they color the image. So we have three channels. And then the shapes of the training labels is a vector that is the class for each of the image. And then for the testing image, similarly, we have uh, 10,000 
uh, test image with uh, 32 by 32 and with three channels. And of course, the label is also a vector with 10,000 uh, uh, in, in, in uh, array. And then for the label values, uh, let's print out the label values. The label value range from zero to line, just like what I mentioned before, we also uh, assign a, their corresponding class names and in a list. And finally, let's take a look on the pixel values and also the image. The pixel value after the normalizations, it now becomes the between zero and one. And this is the uh, image for each of the classes. Say so for example, Ford for this one, truck for this one, and so and so. Now we are ready to build the model. First of all, we would like to set up a configured a sequential model. As an input, the convolutional neural network takes the tensor of shapes that includes the height and width and also the color channels by ignoring the batch size. Um, the, of course, the color channel refers to RGB here. In this example, the convolutional neural network is configured to possess process the inputs of image shapes that is 32 by 32 by 3, uh, which, is a, which is the format of the image. And the input shapes can be set into the first layer. Um, this is the architecture that we would like to create that includes a convolutional layers and then a maximum pooling layers and then again a convolutional layers and then again a pooling layers to help us to capture the features. To create the features learning layer as the convolutional base, um, this is the common pattern, a step of cons to these and mass pulling to this layer. So we have two stacks of this setting. Now let's configure the models. We would like to have a sequential models and then we would like to add a convolution node to these layers as the starting layer. Um, so because this is the first layer, we need to provide the input shape. And the activation function is a value functions. So because this is a convolutional 2Ds, we need to provide a kernel or uh, the convolutional filters. And then for this one, we are going to use a 3x3 three three filters and with 32 neurons as the convolutional layers. So there are a few things that we need to provide um, at the first layer um, that includes the first argument, that is the number of neurons that you would like to use to capture the features. And then the second is the windows, that is the filters. And we are going to use the fee by fee filters. The first argument is the activation functions that you would like to use. We're going to use value. And because this is the first layer, we also need to provide the Im image shape that is 32 by 32 with three channels. And once we have these convolutional layers, we can then pass it on to a maximum pooling 2D layers. Again, we need to provide a filters for it. Um, that is a 2x2 two two filters as an example here. Because this is a 2x2 two two, uh, filters, it will reduce the input image by half. And later on, I will cover the, some of the mathematics operations. And for the time being, uh, let's move on. And, and then we add a convolutional uh, to these layers again. And for this time, we have uh, 64 neurons to capture some more compact features. So we need to increase, we would like to increase the number of neurons. And then again, we have a fee by fee filters. And for this one, we continue to use a value activation functions. And after going through these ones, we add another pooling layers. And that is a two by two pooling layers. And finally, we add a one more convolutional to these layers, um, then with the three by three matrix and also the activation functions value. Let's run this cell first, and then let's take a look on the summary. And here you can see that the parameters is 
continuous increasing because we need to learn more complex features that can help us to define the object. So we need to have an increasing number in the parameters, typically. And then because we continue to increase the parameters, we would like to reduce um, the image shapes. Um, then so we pull out, to, we use two maximum pooling layers to help us to reduce the image size. Therefore, for a typical new, uh, convolutional neural network, the image size will continues to decrease. And then on the other hand, the number of parameters, number of the weights and also the bias will continue to increase. And then they will offset each other to keep balance and then to make sure that uh, overfitting is avoided. Uh, very quick summary, the outputs of every convolutional 2D and mass pooling 2D layers is a 3D tensor of shapes that includes the height, width, and also the channel. For the height and width, um, the height and width dimensions tend to decrease as it goes deeper in the network. You can see from here we have uh, from 30 to 4. And on the other hand, for the number of output channel for each convolutional 2D layers is controlled by the number of the filters. So you can see uh, at the very beginning, we have the input shapes, that is the three channels with the three colors. And then after going through the first convolutional, new uh, uh, convolutional layers, it becomes 32. And then after going through the second convolutional 2D layers, it becomes 64. And then after going through the third channel, third uh, convolutional 2D layer, it again becomes 64 because we assign the number of the number of the new ones uh, as a 64. So the third argument is controlled by these number of new ones. And typically, as the width and height uh, becomes uh, smaller, more computational resources is affordable. Therefore, um, overfitting is avoided and also um, it's much more easy for us to uh, compute. Hence, more output channels can be added in each convolutional to these layers, so they actually balance with each other. And finally, we can add a few layers to build the shallow uh, neural networks for, to help us to uh, do the, perform the classifications. Here, we add the classifications on top of the convolutional basis. To complete the models, one or more dense layers can be accessed on top of the last output tensor from the convolutional basis. Uh, however, dense layers takes vectors, uh, which is a 1D, uh, while the current output is a 3D tensor. This is a 3D tensor, but uh, a dense layer only takes a 1D layer. Therefore, we need, a, we need to convert the 3D, input, 3D outputs to be flattened to a 1D layers with the use of the flattened layer. And then once we have this flattened vector, we will pass it on to two dense layer for, to perform the um, classifications. Now, uh, just like what I mentioned, we would like to add a flattened layers to flatten the outputs from a 3D output to a 1D vector. And then we continue to add two layers um, to perform the classifications. And of course, because this is a classifications, we are going to use a soft mat and also 10 new ones to match the number of class. Now let's run this cell. And let's take a look on the complete architecture here. And you can see the first five layers help us to form the convolutional basis. And then on top of that, we build three more layers that is for the classifications with the use of a flattened layers to turn the 3Ds to a 1D input for the dense layers. And then the last layer, of course, we use the, uh, we use 10 new ones to match with the number of classes 
and use soft maths to perform the classifications. And at the end of the convolutional base output is a 4 by 4 by 64 that are flattened into the vectors into a 1, um, 1024 and then fit with the two dense layers. Now we are ready to compile the models. The optimizers that we are going to use is say Adams, uh, Adam optimizer, and then for the loss functions, remember that uh, we already provide the soft math as the activations lay as the activations lay uh, functions. So in that case, we can just set the logits uh, as equals to false. Uh, if there's no activations functions, um, then of course we can just uh, put it, uh, set it as a true, just like what we mentioned in the previous class. And I will not go through again for these details. And then finally, for the metrics, we just use the accuracy to perform uh, to be the metrics. Now let's run this cell. And now we are ready to train the models. Um, we are going to fit the models, train the model with the fit functions. We will provide the training image and also with their corresponding labels and just uh, use 10 epoch to, um, to fit the, to, to train the models. And, for, and then for the validation data, we are going to use the test image with their corresponding labels. Now let's take a look on the training. After the training, the accuracy is which around 80%. Now we are, ready, we are ready to evaluate the models. Now let's take a look on the evaluations because you use the, the history objects. So we can use the history objects to plot out the accuracy and also the validation sets accuracy. And we can just plot out the results. And at the same time, we can also use the evaluation functions to calculate the test loss or the test accuracy. In that case, I which we have the around 73% of the test accuracy. And you can see that the accuracy and also the validation accuracies continues to improve. But of course, because we just have 10 epoch, we do not know uh, whether it continues to improve or uh, it will get worse later on. However, this is not a very bad result with such a simple model. And we can further verify and also visualize the predictions. Just like what I mentioned before, with the training model, we can use it to make the predictions. Let's predict a 60 image and then correct predictions labels are blue and incorrect prediction labels are red. And then the number indicates the confidence or the percentage of the for the predicted label. Let's run this cell. Here we go. Within the 16 image, we predicted uh, three incorrectly. That includes for this one, uh, this should be a automobiles, but we predict it as a truck, and then this one should be an airplane, but we predict it as a deer, and so and so. And the, of course, just a friendly reminder, the models can, can be wrong, even it has a very, very high confidence about these predictions, so we have to be careful. And that's it for this hands-on exercise. I hope you enjoyed it. In this exercise, we learned how to set up the convolutional base for learning the features. And we also learned how to build a channel neural network on top of it for classifications. We did cover some techniques like uh, convolutional layers, maximum pooling layers, ReLU activation functions, and so and so. And we will explain it in the next video. Bye-bye.